Once these machines are exploited, then the zombie apocalypse continues to grow. Now the attacker has more and more machines, allowing the scans to grow at a larger scale, essentially growing their operation and giving the bot master more and more control. Here you can see we have a really nice looking firewall, red bricks. All right, let's see. Oh, look, there we go. You put your mouse on them. There you can see the the IP address that has been masked, as well as the destination port. Zombies don't like daytime. What's up, Code Crew? In this video, we are going to be setting up a firewall that will spawn zombies in a Minecraft server. Now, in my video, Build a Firewall that tells hackers to try harder, I go over how the TCP three-way handshake is used by attackers to determine open ports on the target machine. It was also in this video that I received numerous comments mentioning that there was no real hacker that was attacking my VPS, but rather a series of bots. And while I knew this upon making, releasing, and even titling the video, I was looking to appeal to a larger audience and avoid using jargon that might be unknown to beginners. However, to the critic's validity, it is true that there is no hacker that is actually sitting behind a computer typing out commands one by one. Rather, they automate the entire process with something known as a bot. Now here I have an article from geek for geeks that talks about what are bots, botnets, and zombies. And here we see that bots are automated software programs that conduct internet-based tasks. They can be developed for a variety of objectives, both good and bad. Now something to note about these tasks is that typically they are self-propagating, right? They will essentially spread themselves and multiply, creating what is known as a botnet. Now here we see a botnet is a series of computers or machines that have been infected by malware allowing a bot master to remotely control them. Now, as far as what a zombie is, here we see that a zombie is just the individual machine that's infected within the botnet. Now, to help you visualize it even more, here I have a diagram that I made. Here you see that there is a bot master that has created a bot that's meant to scan public facing machines, finding the one that's vulnerable, and then proceeding to exploit it. Once this happens, the bot master then has two machines under their control, now both of them are scanning for vulnerable public facing machines. Once these machines are exploited, then the zombie apocalypse continues to grow. Now the attacker has more and more machines, allowing the scans to grow at a larger scale, essentially growing their operation and giving the bot master more and more control. So now that we understand essentially where these zombies come from, it just made the most sense to me to spawn literal zombies in Minecraft, and I think you would agree with that. So let's go ahead and dive into how this is going to go down. Now, I'm going to need a public facing machine. That way I can get some real activity from real zombies. Let me go over to DigitalOcean. I'm just going to create a VPS. Now I'm going to set this one up with two gigs of RAM. And let me name this Minecraft Firewall. Okay, let's go ahead and create that. Okay, we have our VPS ready. Let's go ahead and log into the console. First thing I'm going to want to do is do an update and an upgrade. Let's go ahead and run an apt update and apt upgrade. We are going to need our Minecraft server while that's going here on Minecraft's website. You can go ahead and grab the link for the jar. You would just copy that. And I actually have a cheat sheet here for you that you can follow. And uh, that's the link that's right here. OK, so let me just go ahead and paste it in so you can see that it is an official source from Minecraft. Yeah. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with the severity of our zombie situation, here I have a command that you can run with TCP dump. This is going to let you see all the scans that are happening on your machine or your public facing VPS. So let's go ahead and run this. I put a dash in on it just to get rid of the name resolution. Here you can see we have a scan from this IP address. Another scan came in from this IP address. There you see the sin flag within the packet being sent. Here is the destination port that is being scanned. And notice that they're just coming through one after another, one after another, right? They don't let up. Now that we've seen all that, let's go ahead and install our Java that we're going to need for our Minecraft server. Let me just paste that command in. All right, let me go ahead and make directory Minecraft. Let me CD into Minecraft and we will go ahead and do our wget on that. All right, let's go ahead and build that real quick. All right, so we got a couple errors that are expected. We have a fail to load properties of file server dot properties and a fail to agree on the EULA. So let's go ahead and list out. And there we see our server properties and there is our EULA. Let's go ahead and edit our server properties first. And here we're going to make a few changes, okay? So here on enable Archon, which stands for remote console, 
we're going to turn this into true. Okay, we're going to need that so that we can connect our backend Python system to the Minecraft server. Okay. All right, next, we're going to change our game mode into creative. I suppose you can keep it on survival if you'd like. And then next, we're going to change our remote console password. I'm going to make this subscribe to NAR coding. And then I think last thing I'm going to change is the simulation distance. I'll just put this to 30. But uh, let me know in the comments below if there's a better number that I should put there. Okay, that's all set up. Let's go into our EULA. Let's set this to true so that we can show them that we agree to their terms and whatnot. Save that and we can go ahead and run our Minecraft server once again. All right, it is preparing our spawn area. All right, so we have our remote console listener ready to go. Let's go into our Minecraft game, go into multiplayer, and we're going to add a server. I'll call this Narcraft, and let's grab that public facing IP address that we'll need. Boom, let's paste that in, done. Here we see we have a healthy ping. Let's go ahead and get into the world. All right, here we are in our Minecraft world. Now I have this on a pretty small machine, so it's not gonna be as quick of a render as you might be used to. Again, let me know in the comments below if you have suggestions for a machine or RAM size. That way we can just uh, make this more efficient for any future experiments like this. Okay, so um, now that I'm in here, let's see what we can do to spawn some zombies. Okay, I think here is a nice plot of land that we can do our firewall. Let's go ahead and put a brick wall from here all the way to here what do you guys think okay so let's go ahead and pop open our console and we're looking to do a fill from negative 23 63 negative 237 let's see all right and we'll make this a uh, minecraft bricks should have been a little taller though right so let me come back let's actually make this like uh five bricks tall so this would be 68 nice okay now we just go ahead and put some campfires on top let's come back we'll put this over on uh, 69 here and this will be a campfire now the firewall is strictly for aesthetic right just for the novelty of this experiment that we're doing here you can see we have a really nice looking firewall red bricks fits the typical visual appearance that we would expect okay so now we're looking to spawn some zombies anytime an attacker scans our machine, okay? So let's go over to this Python script that we have. Now this script is the same one that we saw in the video, Build the Firewall that tells hackers to try harder, except in that video, we had a action that was taking place when we saw scans on the machine where we would do two things. We would block the IP address that was scanning our machine, and then we would send them a packet with a message that said to try harder. In this video, we are going to be taking two actions as well. We're going to block the IP address that's scanning our machine, and then we will also spawn a zombie in the Minecraft server. So here you can see there is the block IP function, there is the send to Minecraft function, and then here is the handle packet logic. So here you see if there is a sin flag in the packet, we will go ahead and send that source IP to both the block IP address function and the send to Minecraft function. And here we see the actual running where we start the sniffing on our TCP traffic, looking to handle the packets. And we just have to specify the coordinates in which we want the zombies to spawn. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this. Let's come over to our, let's come over to our VPS. I actually need a second window. So let me go ahead and pop that open here. Let's go ahead and make a directory called firewall. Let's CD into there. We're going to need some Python dependencies. We're going to need Python 3 vem. Be sure to apt install that as well as a Python 3 pip. Let those install. Now notice the dependencies that we're going to use here. We're going to use Scapy as well as Minecraft Remote Console. So let's go ahead and activate our Python 3 virtual environment before we install those dependencies. Let's activate them and we will go ahead and do a pip install on Scapy and Minecraft remote console. All right, let's go ahead and put in our script, our firewall to minecraft.py. Let's paste that in. And we need to find the coordinates in which we're going to spawn our zombies. So back into the game, we're here on negative 32, 63, 231. 
Okay, so now that we know our coordinates, let's go ahead and do a Python 3 on our firewall to Minecraft. This will be on negative 31. Let's make it actually 64 and negative 231. All right, let's see. Oh, look, there we go. If you put your mouse on them, there you can see the, the IP address that has been masked as well as the destination port. They all keep running away over here. I don't like that. Okay, let's go ahead and put a fill right here. So let's see. We're going to do a fill on negative 23, 63, negative 237. All right, let's make that Minecraft bricks. Oh, nice. All right, now he's trapped. He can't get anywhere. <laughs> we got a lot of zombies here. Okay, so I think what we can do is we can set the time. And we're going to do a set day. Zombies don't like daytime. Burn. Burn. I think a good addition to this to this little program that we've done would be to make it to where the IP address doesn't block on our VPS until you kill the zombie. I think that would just be so awesome. Requires a little bit more work though, and I wanted to make this video just to inspire you and let you see the potential and how easy it is to connect backend systems to some of the favorite things that you do in your free time. And with that, guys, I hope you had a wonderful time. Be sure to smash like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.